Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. So let's say if people are looking for a sign that we've gone too far, which I personally would say we've seen lots of signs, right? But a definite, a definite one would be uh, what's happening right here. Seattle law enforcement experts urge police to take back Chaz before it's too late. Um, so law enforcement officials are ur urging the Seattle Police Department to retake control of the East Precinct after hundreds of demonstrators overtook Monday the six-block area that surrounds it. Officers effectively abandoned the area during violent clashes with demonstrators calling to defund the police. Uh, demonstrators have since set up Occupy in the... Um, uh, occupancy, excuse me, in the section of downtown Seattle and have renamed it Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, Chaz. That's where that mm -hmm. comes from. Here's a picture of it. Um, there's a police precinct within within this. It can't continue like that. Jim Fuda, a law enforcement expert and the director of law enforcement services for Crime Stoppers, which works with SPD, told Como News. Uh, some action is going to have to be taken. Is there federal laws broken? Does the FBI need to come in? But at some point, arrests and these people um, are going to have to be removed if they don't move. Uh, I can get deeper into this here. I'm sure lots of people have heard about this. What do you guys think about this? Um, Marco, you can go first if you want. Um, I kind of walked away the whole time Hank was talking. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll pick it up, and then you can pick yeah. it up after me. Oh, then. you're drinking, <laughs> of course. That's that's what. So, uh, well, Seattle has a long history in Portland. To Portland, they tried to set up their little own autonomous zone to right after this, but mm -hmm. that one kind of failed. Mm -hmm. So Seattle is kind of like a failed city, if you know a lot about it, because mm -hmm. their, their city council is extremely far left. So this is extreme far left fighting against even further far left. So almost like anarchist left. And I think even one of the city council members is supposedly running a lot of the stuff in the background, kind of let people infiltrate stuff. I know that in their town hall, um, they had it locked up, but somebody let all the protesters in. They kind of took over town hall and started protesting inside. So they've always kind of had this chaos and they kind of let it go. So it, it's this weird thing where as an American, even even the pro Second Amendment person where you don't want government overreach, your first instinct is, oh, you can't let people take over cities. This is ridiculous. But then at the same time, it's like they're eating themselves alive. Mm -hmm. Like they voted for this. They're making all these demands. You know, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you saw the list of the demands that they made. And it's like these are the same demands that probably their own politicians support, like all these uh, – all these issues so i don't know what they what they're trying to achieve here yeah at least locally other than they're they're having a fun game like hey we took over part of the city check it out now we can do it and and have our fun like leftist utopia fun game over here and behave like antifa and yeah and it's not a big part of the city it's a small part of the city relatively and what's interesting yeah. is i see the media is reporting oh there's nothing going on here it's just people like hanging out dancing in the streets uh you know free food and stuff like that having a barbecue or something but i know there are reports of of the the businesses in the area because they basically these guys set up their own security which i think is manned by antifa and mm -hmm. um and and so they are making the this antifa security wing wing nuts whatever they are they are making those businesses pay them protection money. You know, this is there's a precinct inside of this, and these guys can't do anything. They're barricaded up. I mean, even if they decide to do something now, they have to roll through these barricades, roll through that. There's sit there's there's citizens who probably didn't want you know this to happen. I'm sure there's people who maybe are down with it. You know, and then the people that have businesses there now, um, you know, are being strong armed. What the hell? You know, this is like a practice. We're, we're seeing a lot of this, I think, go on around the country where they're basically making these little experiments to see what they can get away with. Yep. Right? And then, of course, it's happening in places where um, the, the local government is allowing it to happen. Yep. You know? But then the same, all right, so, I mean, like, so my point of view on this is, 
kind of piggyback on what Pistol uh, on what PR Pistoletto said, what which is, are you surprised that these are the that, that it happened there? No, because if you look at all the major Antifa like you know video clips or whatever the major uprisings that they've had in the past, it's usually in the Pacific North the Northwest is where mm-hmm. you see mm-hmm. as far as what they go really crazy. Mm-hmm. Then you're also talking about uh you know like as far as them taking over. And them being in like a four block radius, yeah, if they take it over, well, what can you do? You shut off the water probably first, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah. then if you're also talking about Pacific Northwesterners, who's the type of person that could probably live without running water the longest? It's yeah. probably a Pacific Northwesterner. These are like really mm-hmm. outdoors yeah. people, you know what I'm saying? But there's, so, there, there's, I mean, there's a, this is basically like terrorists. I, I know that Guns and Gear put up something about this, right? Um, that I was listening to earlier, myself and Lola. But here, let me run this in. This is, here you go, This the, the, the headline here of this picture that you're seeing, a volunteer works security at an entrance to the so-called Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone on June 10th in Seattle. You know, um, if I go back and play the video here, let me see if I could scrub forward in this video. You actually see... Um, you actually see these people pushing up the barricades and all that kind of stuff. Okay, I can't get it yep. to play right now. Um, I'll try to get it play while we're while we're talking here. Well, I know um, they're they're supposedly see, within like two days. Supposedly, there's this guy who's like a local rapper named Roz, who mm-hmm. kind of strong armed everybody, and he and his and I guess his crew have guns. Mm-hmm. So they've kind of like taken over de facto leadership. People mm-hmm. are like saying that he's a warlord or something. Mm-hmm. And he even went up to some guys were tagging on one of the buildings. And he's like, oh, yo, you can't tag on the building. They're like, why? Like, this is we took over this place. And he's like, no, the business owners being nice to us, you can't do that. So it's almost funny because they're anarchists, but then they're trying to protect property rights like the police do. Yeah. (laughs) So let me. So what do you guys think would happen if some pro 2A people did this? Oh my gosh, they would, well, they'd be demonized right away. They'd be called white supremacists, first of all. That's mm-hmm. the first thing that would probably happen. Mm-hmm. Um, then even, I, I think the demand from the media would be so strong to do, to have like an armed response that I don't even know how Trump would respond to it. Because so far, he likes to talk a bit game, but he's been pretty like federalist when it comes to a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I know people... Or like, uh, he could he needs to force these states to get out of lockdowns. Mm-hmm. He can't really do it if he's being constitutional. Yeah. So he's actually been a lot less strong armed than people think. He talks like I'm gonna come down with a hammer, but then at the end of the day they're like, eh, Constitution, you can't really do that. And he's like, Well, uh, whatever, man. Yeah. So I actually don't know what he would do, but I definitely know the media and the left yeah. would go crazy. So Gorillas and Guns says, and last night they beat up a graffiti artist. That Raz guy yeah. said he was the police here now. Um yeah. So basically, inside of America, we're allowing people to just take over territory. We're allowing warlords or whatever you want to call it. We're allowing that to happen. And the government's you sitting back in for America, whatever reason. You also have a law for, for squatter rights. Mm-hmm. America mm-hmm. was built on squatter rights, basically. Mm-hmm. You really want to get technical. Yeah, but so, I mean, don't you think this is a really dangerous precedent to set here? I think, you know? put like this, and... and, and Yes, I think it's dangerous, and mm-hmm. one I don't know how it could end simply because, again, what Pistola, uh, you know, PR Pistolero said, which is, you know, all the stuff that their local government is now for, which is, you know, less police involvement, mm-hmm. less violent tactics. You cannot get these people out unless you actually like, I don't mean storm it like guns mm-hmm. a blazing, but you're gonna have to like systematically clear those four blocks mm-hmm. and going to have to put hands on people. Yeah. And right now for the police to do that is not a good look. And the longer you wait, the harder it's going to get. So I don't have the right answer. And the right answer, the longer it takes to come, the harder it's going to be for everybody. I believe yeah. that. Yeah. And it's almost yeah. like yeah. some people, including people in our government, are pushing this narrative. They want to see what we could do here. Can we can we push all of America into a state of emergency? It's weird, mm-hmm. right? COVID-19 pushes us into a state of emergency. We shut everything down. And now we have some other stuff being set up when, I mean, I always tell people this, you don't really want any of this. You don't really no. want this in America. But obviously, there's some people that do want this. Yeah. Well, and I said, and, and you see even some, this is why I, you know, I told Joe, Joe's been pretty active, you know, throughout all of this. I, I didn't post for like a week because I was kind of thinking, 
you know, you had a lot of guys like uh, Kevin Dixie and 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 guys like him that really uh, can articulate what's going on mm-hmm. better than what better than I can. So I kind of sat back, but I started looking at the bigger picture of there's just too many things going on. And, and you know me, I go down the rabbit hole a lot, mm-hmm. but there's just too many things going on right now. And there's too many bad actors taking advantage of stuff. Mm-hmm. And and so, you know, the, the risk here, what's going on with Chaz, too, is you have a lot of people that are giving them money. They're donating them money to keep, you know, if they if they're paying the utilities and they get enough people that live there to give them water, let them use showers and stuff, they can work there. Now, obviously, it's an urban area, so it's not like they can farm or anything Mm -hmm. like that. So it's an unsustainable situation. But if the government doesn't, like, create a roadblock, there's going to be crazy rich leftists that are going to be attracted to this, and they're going to spend their money to supply these people with food after a while, the longer it takes. Mm -hmm. And you also bring the risk of, I don't want to compare it to, like, terrorism in the Middle East, but... Once you started like the war in Iraq, it attracted every jihadist in the area from all, every country there. Mm-hmm. So you had guys from every country just like, we can fight Americans, we're gonna go there and we're gonna do it. Mm-hmm. So here it might be like, Antifa took over this one place, now every crazy leftist might be like, this is where we're gonna hang out, this mm-hmm. is gonna be our headquarters from now on. Mm-hmm. So that's the risk that you run into. Yeah, uh, I, with that, I think like. I've said this before, I'll say it again. Um, this country right now doesn't have any leaders. Mm -hmm. There's no leaders operating inside of America right now, right? And there's people trying to light a fire. Okay, so obviously we have stuff going on. We have bad things that happen that we all agree on. This is a bad thing to happen. You know, we have the COVID-19 situation affecting the planet, right? Including here, everyone here in America. Then you have this and then you allow, you allow this particular thing to happen. It's only a matter of time before not only those guys start escalating that or other people start um, taking over different zones. Okay, you can very easily, very quickly have people start setting up zones on all sides. Like for me, I'm not really like I, here's how I look at everything. I see it from my perspective. The, the thing that comes first is me, then Lola, then my kids. That's what I think about. Right. Everything, everything spreads out from there in terms of who but I think. About. You first, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You know why? Because if I go down, I can't fight for my family. Exactly. So you have to have that level of selfishness. But it's the it, because I've got to make sure I'm paying attention to what's happening. But yes, <laughs> okay, mm-hmm. I, someone has to decide that they're the leader of something, and then they have to be looking at everything. So for me, I think about security from that point of view. Like, hey, I've got to make sure I'm taking care of me and my family, and then that goes out in a cone, right? But yep. there's going to be lots of people on lots of different sides going, okay, we're going to jump into this. We're going to take this place, and then we're going to take that place. We're going to take this place. We're going to take that place. What's the end game here? What are the actual leaders, what are they waiting for? What are they hoping for? Are they hoping we could get to a point where they could push a button, then we're in a permanent state of emergency, and then it's like, okay, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, whether you like it or not. Um, I see Night Train saying, uh, I predict this is all a prelude to what's really gonna happen in November. You know, let's just imagine for a second a situation where Trump still wins in November, and then all these people lose their minds. Yeah. Right. Because reality of what Americans are thinking, we don't want Joe Biden. And we don't we don't we don't want America to go in this direction. Trump wins. These guys lose their minds and decide to challenge that. That didn't happen last time. But we're setting up a situation where this could possibly happen. You know, once we go there, man, once we go there, it becomes a different world that we all live in. Yeah. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.